Today, the former CEO of Celsius, Alex Mashinsky, is arrested, and a U.S. district court delivers a huge win for Ripple in its battle with the SEC. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Mackenzie Segalos. Digital currencies are turning higher this morning, with Bitcoin climbing to just under $31,000, Ether crossing above $1,900, and XRP rallying 25% after we finally got a ruling in that battle between the SEC and Ripple. We'll catch you up on that in just a second. First, though, let's talk about breaking news on Celsius Network. A source told CNBC this morning that Alex Mashinsky, the former CEO of the bankrupt crypto lender, was arrested today. Charges against Mashinsky include securities, commodities, and wire fraud, as well as various securities manipulation and fraud charges. Now, if convicted, Mashinsky and another former Celsius executive could face decades in prison. At the same time, the bankrupt crypto company agreed to pay a $4.7 billion settlement with government regulators. The crypto lender was charged by the SEC and CFTC today with scheming to defraud investors out of billions of dollars. That settlement was announced by the FTC and will not be paid until the company is able to return what remains of customer assets in bankruptcy proceedings. The latest developments are in addition to the allegations from New York prosecutors earlier this year that Mashinsky orchestrated a $20 billion fraud against investors. Also happening this morning, a district court judge in New York just delivered a huge win for Ripple in its case against the SEC. In the ruling, the judge said the XRP token is, quote, not necessarily a security on its face. That decision was seen as a key hurdle for the crypto industry amid huge scrutiny in 2023. The positive news for Ripple sent altcoins soaring as it gave hope to crypto investors that similar tokens may not be considered securities. To discuss these headlines and what they mean for the industry, I spoke to Corey Clipston, the CEO of Swan Bitcoin, for his take. So, Corey, there are two breaking news stories happening right now. I want to get your take on both. Let's start with Celsius. So a couple of different actions today, both from the SEC and CFTC, but also Mashinsky is has now been arrested. Can you kind of set the significance of this for us? I mean, we already knew how a lot of these things were playing out. A lot of talk already about how fraudulent uh, Celsius had been in some of its actions. So ha- help us help us dissect the news today. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, everyone expected Mashinsky eventually to be arrested. So that was no surprise. Uh, I would say probably the biggest surprise for me was the magnitude of the FTC fine that accompanied the announcements this morning. So $4.7 billion is uh, not chump change. Uh, I believe that Meta, Facebook faced a, a charge of $5 billion for some of their violations in the past. And that was maybe one of the biggest ones ever. So it's kind of that order of magnitude. Um, yeah, just a, just a massive number. And it just means, you know, whatever they are able to return to creditors, there will be less than nothing left, obviously, after facing a fine like that. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to ask you about. Just, you know, the, the parallel proceedings in terms of Celsius and bankruptcy court trying to make customers whole again. How, how does this fine affect that? The fine is junior to those claims. Uh, so whatever gets paid out through bankruptcy courts comes first. And then, you know, if there were somehow any value left, which obviously there won't be, then the fine would just kind of finish filling the grave. OK, let's pivot now. So at the same time that this Celsius news is coming in, we also just got a ruling in the SEC Ripple case. What's the significance of this? Yeah, so in my understanding, this is actually uh, rulings on requests for summary judgment from both sides. So it actually doesn't mean that there won't be full in-court trial litigation of these claims. Uh, What was granted, I believe, was uh, the SEC's claim that the Ripple sales directly to investors constituted uh, the sale of securities. that was granted. So that summary judgment did pass. It looks like there was not a summary judgment passed on uh, programmatic sales of Ripple, I'm sorry, of their XRP token owned by Ripple um, through exchanges, because that was not them selling directly from the company to the investor. It was intermediated by exchanges. So uh, they said that did not uh, warrant a summary judgment in favor of the SEC's position. Now, in the last half hour, we saw Coinbase and MicroStrategy stock shoot up. So how, how is the industry reading into this, uh, you know, this this document that just came out? 
Yeah, I mean, it seems like on first read, they're expecting that the secondary sales may be relatively more in the clear. So when a company isn't directly shilling their securities via ICO or the way that Ripple uh, corporate has marketed and sold uh, Ripple token, XRP, whatever to investors in direct sales over the years, uh, maybe once these things are on exchanges, uh, there there's some wiggle room there. And so I think that's why the market is hopeful. Does this have any sort of impact on the regulatory uncertainty that everyone has been talking about? Obviously, you know, Lummis just yesterday resurfaced her bill that you know we've been talking about for a while now. Uh, what's the significance of this ruling and, and where uh, regulation is headed in the U.S.? Yeah, I think a lot of this stuff is just going to have to get regulated through courts. And so I'd, I'd say this kind of supports the thesis that, you know, I guess Ginsler and some others have been saying all along that existing securities law is sufficient to handle digital securities because uh, walks like a duck, talks like a duck, acts like a duck. It's still the same thing, regardless of the, whether it's on different kinds of rails. And I would say this probably supports that thesis because you're seeing case law, you know, Courses getting settled, courses getting cases getting settled, cases getting litigated, and you'll see the establishment of of precedent that other courts can follow as some of these uh, cases work their way through the system. So, it seems like the system is working. It's slow. It's ugly. It's not moving at the speed of uh, you know crypto. That's for sure. Um, but uh, you know, I think this will let people gain some more clarity over time as more of these cases work their way through. You know, specifically on the SEC front, does this, you know, I don't know, take the wind out of their sails with respect to this regulation by enforcement dynamic that we've we've seen play out the last few years? I don't think so at all. I think as I as I just sort of intimated, I believe this is actually in this is a mark in favor of setting law via via court cases and not having to come through with you know entirely new regulation or starting a new agency like Coinbase wishes would happen or something like that. So I, I think you just, you litigate these cases, you know, and, and apply existing law. And I think uh, the system will kind of just sort it out. That's what I think will happen. No judgment either way. It's just what I expect to happen. Okay. That's all for crypto world today, but we will be back again tomorrow. So we'll see you then. <laughs>